Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Today, we will discuss one of the most pressing problems humans face, waste management. We will take you on an exclusive tour inside some of the most extensive recycling facilities globally. From Northern Ireland to Pakistan and all the way to Sweden, join us as we explore the intricate processes of handling tons of waste every day. But before getting started, Let's talk about the sheer magnitude of recycling worldwide. Every year, the world grapples with an ever-growing mountain of waste. Globally, around 2 billion tons of waste is being generated. But luckily, some 20% of this finds a second life in the form of recycling. Top recyclers like Germany, South Korea, and Austria lead in these sustainable practices, showcasing a collective commitment to reducing environmental impact. Recycling isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Let's delve into the various methods employed in recycling. In our exploration of recycling, we've uncovered various methods such as recycling bales, tightly compacted bundles of recycled materials, and optimizing storage and transportation in the recycling process. And shredding waste, which involves breaking down materials like paper, plastic, or metal into smaller pieces, improves the efficiency of recycling and aids in the creation of new products. Amid diverse recycling methods, our first stop is Bryson Recycling Facility in Northern Ireland. Waste collected from your household or municipalities through the trucks reaches the processing unit. The waste collection process kicks off with a JCB, heavy duty construction vehicle, picking up waste from designated areas. Collected waste is transported by a bus to the facility's core. Once there, the bus unloads the waste near specialized machines for processing. Conveyors, which are continuous belts responsible for transporting waste between different stages of the recycling process, ensure a smooth and efficient workflow. Manual sorters provide human judgment and adaptability, crucial for quality control, while automated sorting systems, often equipped with sensors and air jets, help categorize recyclables such as paper, plastic, and metal. The combined effort enhances the precision of recycling by streamlining the separation of different materials, contributing to the overall efficiency of the recycling process. The materials that come through our MRF, which is a material recovery facility, they are all mixed together. So in there you would have a mix of paper, cardboard, cartons, cans, plastics, cans. 
um, they need to be separated out using different sorting equipments. More recently have had a, a, a robot installed um, it's used to identify different materials so you can you can train it um, to recognize anything so at the minute we have it um, selected to remove cartons from um, a line of recycling. Large compactors compress the materials into tightly bound bundles, known as recycling bales. These bales are compact and facilitate efficient storage and transportation. These processed, recycled bales work as a raw material in manufacturing new plastic products. Now, let's jet off to Pakistan and explore their plastic bottle recycling facility. Laden trucks with collected waste bottles are bought from various sources, such as households or businesses. Upon arrival, material sorting is done to remove any non-recyclable materials or contaminants. This step ensures that only suitable materials proceed to the shredding process. The sorted waste bottles are then fed into a conveyor system. This system transports the bottles to the core of the machine's shredding machines in an organized and controlled manner. These machines use cutting mechanisms, such as rotating blades, to break down the plastic bottles into smaller, uniform pieces. Shredded waste bottles are immersed in a water tank to separate materials based on density and remove contaminants which aids in quality controls. As the waste bottles move through the shredding machine, the cutting mechanism slices and tears them apart. The result is smaller and more uniform pieces of material. The size reduction is a crucial objective making the material easier to handle and process in subsequent stages. PVC pipe recycling may require further processing downstream. Manual labor in a small processing unit uses shovel scoops to shift the shredded material to the following processing stage. The pieces are milled into granular form, which is repeated until the desired final form is achieved. Usually, the shredded PVC is melted and extruded through a pipe-forming machine. It shapes the molten PVC in the desired pipe form. The extruded pipe is then cooled and passed through rollers to shape and smoothen the surface, ensuring uniform thickness and surface finish. In its final stage, the PVC is cut to the correct length, ready for dispatch and use in different applications. Our destination takes us to Sweden, where we explore an incineration facility.
in a cavernous room filled with garbage. A huge mechanical claw reaches down and lifts tons of combustible trash. The trash, now considered a fuel, is burned in a boiler at a temperature generally exceeding 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The facility processes about 6,000 tons of combustible garbage a year, turning it into proper heat and electricity, ideal for district heating due to its optimal temperature and heat quality. So this is the bunker where we take in all the combustible waste that we're going to turn into district heat and electricity. We have about 400 trucks coming every day, and we are totally in a year incinerating close to 600,000 tons of waste, producing heat for the city of Malmö and a lot of electricity as well. In 2022, Sweden's National Waste Management Association reported that the energy generated from combustible waste in the country amounted to around 386 megawatts. Globally, more than 2 billion tons of waste are produced annually, and around 44% of this comes from food and organic materials, about 17% from paper and cardboard, 12% from plastics, and the remaining from metals, glass, wood, and other sources. Despite enough waste, the current technology is limiting us. However, countries and industries worldwide are working towards making waste management more sustainable and reducing the strain on the environment. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.